Now that Monster Hunter World is finished, all of the previously time-limited events are now permanently available for all players to do. Scrolling through the events tab, seeing all of the quests lined up can be a very overwhelming experience. In an attempt to demystify this and remove some of the overwhelm, I've been doing roundup videos and individual spotlights of events that I think are very much worth your while. These span across all parts of the game and if you haven't checked them out, I'm sure there's going to be something of value there for you. I'm Lighted Up Dan and on this channel we cover action RPGs, roguelikes and MMOs, including an absolute ton of Monster Hunter World I'm sure you've noticed. A massive thank you to all of you for taking us from around 99% of you as being unsubscribed subscribed to 88% now. Let's keep that momentum going. I know the majority of viewers here are returning viewers. It would mean the world to me if you enjoy the videos, do subscribe. And with that said, let's get to it. Up first, we've got a low rank four star HR6 event, greeting the gluttons, pitting you up against a great Jagras, Puke Puke and Paolumu inside the special arena. All three of them are actually there at the same time inside the arena waiting for you. There's not too much to say about these folks, not only because it's low rank, but because the actual monsters themselves are pretty straightforward. Keeping in front of them whilst a little bit to the side will see you avoid most of their attacks. Look out for the tail swings on the Puke Pukes. Severing the tails too gives you an advantage in combat here. Paolumu's attacks won't be able to reach you anywhere near as much and Puke Puke won't be able to spew poison at you. I think it can still spit it at you though. Tenderize where possible, get wall bangs when the monsters aren't enraged and use the traps of the special arena to your advantage. Once you're done gutting these gargantuan and gluttonous goons. You'll be rewarded with a bunch of monster parts and some canteen vouchers. You can use these to guarantee that you'll get the food buffs applied to you no matter what stars they were on previously. Maybe not as useful as the gourmet vouchers, but still pretty good. Up next, we've got a low rank five star HR8 event, Kirin the Myth, pitting you up against two Kirins in the Coral Highlands. This time we're after commendations and you can even do the poison posse quest if you prefer. Both events will earn you them. Kirin moves about a lot and can be a pain in the ass at the best of times. High Thunder Elemental Resist is going to be useful to negate a bunch of damage. And if you've got 20 or more, it'll also negate Thunder Elemental Blight. If you have three Stun Resist, the Thunder Elemental Blight's not going to do anything to you anyway. Having Paralysis Resistance can be pretty useful as well because you can get paralyzed during this fight. And thankfully, you don't need to worry about this monster's roars. They don't stun you in any capacity. Deal damage on the head when you can. Go for the wall bangs and tenderize the parts when you've got an opportunity. And given that there's two monsters, they will have lower maximum HP as well. This is also low rank, so you shouldn't really have too many problems. Once you're done grounding these Pikachu ponies, you will be rewarded with a commendation. Very valuable items that are previously only rewarded by doing the Zora Magdaros quest, which, you'll know, is a massive pain in the ass. Useful for upgrading all sorts of weapons, including the defender's gear. Up next, we've got the high rank 9 star HR16 event, Keeper of the Other World, taking on the Xenogiva in the Confluence of Fates. This is for high commendations, and you can also do a bunch of optional quests against Elder Dragons for these instead. Xeno's pretty fun though, so let's give this one a spin. In the first area, there are a bunch of pillars that are sticking out which you can hit with your slinger, and they will drop falling boulders on top of the monster. This is a great way to crack out a ton of damage really quickly, and give you a damage window opportunity to get stuck in. Tenderizing the parts when you've got the opportunity to is going to be really helpful to get more damage out. Focus on the front two legs and the head all the glowing limbs basically to crack out a ton of damage. When it is in the second area and it's flying around, don't be afraid to use your clutch claw to get up on there and just deal some additional damage. This will really help to ground the monster as well so that you can carry on with the fight. If you are in high rank yourself, this is best done in a group in my opinion, but it is very much a soloable experience as well even if you are in high rank yourself. Once you're done stopping more Safi Jeevas being made, you'll be rewarded with a high commendation. These are also used for a bunch of gear upgrades and are going to be super helpful. Next, we've got a master rank one star MR2 event, a fish to whet your appetite, where we need to capture two great wet fish in Wild Spire Waste. You can find one in the body of water near the first camp at the beginning and one or two in the central camp as well. I think if the giant boss fish is in the central camp one, then there's a chance that the great wet fish won't be there because I kind of ran into some issues with it. Either way, this shouldn't cause you too much trouble and it shouldn't take you too long. Once you're done living the 
the mini game fishing dream, you'll be rewarded with a bunch of stuff, including some wet fish fin pluses. These immediately sharpen your weapons in one cycle and only have a 10% chance to actually be consumed. A super useful item to include in your regular item loadout. Up next, we've got the master rank 5 star MR19 event We Three Kings, pitting you up against the Kirin, Kashala Deora, and Teostra inside the special arena. As there are three of them, their HP totals will be heavily reduced, but it doesn't mean that they're not an enormous pain in the ass. I think we all know who we're talking about here mostly. Yeah, the Kirin's a bit annoying, but ah, oh, the Kashala, good god. If this event takes you ages to do, it's gonna be because of the Kashala. <laughs> all the usual supply here, friends. Your high elemental resistance is gonna be very useful for the Kirin and for the Teostra as well. Kirin can be really dangerous and can paralyze you, so just make sure you're watching out for its attacks. Kashala's gonna put wind everywhere. It's gonna be an absolute nightmare. Do not use rock steady mantle. You will get caught in the wind and you will get shredded. Teostra's fire, blast blight, and of course supernova can be really dangerous too. Tenderize parts when you can. Get wall bangs when they're not enraged. Use the special traps inside the arena like the falling boulders and the dragonator. And don't be afraid to play multiplayer as well. You can do an SOS. It should fill out. I just happened to do this one solo just for the sake of it. Once you're done questioning all of your life choices that led you up to the point of thinking doing this event was a good idea, you will be rewarded with a bunch of Elder Dragon parts as well as the ones that you carved. And there's a higher chance than normal of you getting a large Elder Dragon gem, in addition to any that you carved off them as well. You can always just go and fight an Elder Dragon by itself in an investigation or off an optional. You don't need to do this event. But given that it does have a higher chance to get a large Elder Dragon gem, I mean, every single time I've done it, I've gotten one, despite what the wiki says about the percentages. But there are other options as well. These materials are invaluable for high-end gear. You're going to need them to get your final upgrades on loads of different weapons, including crafting yourself the very sexy Alatreon weapons. Lastly, we've got the Master Rank 6-star MR24 event, A Shocking Climax, pitting you up against a Zenoga and a Namiel in Coral Highlands. Once again, as it is two monsters, their HP totals will be reduced. Zenoga is a fantastic fight and a really hard monster at the best of times. It can be very aggressive, attacking in quick succession with combos in sequence. It's good practice if you are hit with one of them to stay down, as you will have invulnerability for the follow-up hit then, which might otherwise cart you. Focusing out your damage on the head is going to be really useful for getting part breaks and staggers, giving you additional windows of damage for you and your squad. Tenderize parts when you can and go for wall bangs when the monster isn't enraged. Thunder elemental resistance will be helpful here if you can stack it, but if you've got three stun resist, you're pretty good anyway. Namiel can be a slippery sucker. Do not let her appearance fool you. She is deadly. Dangerous close range and long range attacks, particularly the water cannons and blasts, electrifying the pools of water to cause big explosions for massive damage. Keeping close to her belly and legs is going to allow you to avoid the more dangerous water cannon attacks and to chip away damage against the monster. Try and get hits off on the head for big stuns, big staggers, tenderize parts when you've got the opportunity to, and of course go for wall bangs when the monster isn't enraged. Elder dragons are no joke, but if you stay focused and watch your step, you should be okay. Once you're done blushing over the name of the event, you will be rewarded with a unity symbol. Super useful for crafting a bunch of event gear, upgrading a bunch of event gear as well, including Dante's Devil Sword, the Final Fantasy XIV Dragonkin sect, and a bunch of stuff. It's just super useful. And that brings us to the end of this event roundup for really useful and rare components. I hope this was useful. Do let me know if I missed anything that you know is super useful as well. I know there's muscle monkey madness for gourmet vouchers and a bunch of stuff, but for two furious Rajangs, I'm not sure that's worth it. And I'm also aware of a farewell to Zenoga. We've covered that a bunch on the channel over here. That is just such an all-round super useful event. But anything else, let us know in the comments so we can all learn from each other. I would love to hear from you. As mentioned at the beginning of the video, you folks have done a fantastic job getting us from 99% of unsubscribed viewers all the way over to 88%. Let's keep that momentum up. If you do enjoy the videos here, do subscribe to the channel. And the Discord is open to the entire community, so come and join. We've got a Monster Hunter looking for group channel. Let's get some hunts in together. Thank you so much for watching, and until next time, I'll see you in the new world.